Okay, the title of this session is How to Teach <coughs> Students to Assess Their Own Work. And this is a third of a series on assessment and critical thinking and its relationship to the classroom. And what I'm going to do is present first a general model that represents a strategy for moving in the direction of getting students to both engage in thinking and then assess the thinking they used in that engagement. And then once having presented a kind of global model, I'll show you, talk to you about a lot of specific small things that you can do in the context of refining the bits and pieces when you get to more of the micro level of structure. Uh, to me, in a classroom, there are three variables. There is content, whatever you want the students to learn, that's my definition of content. So by that definition, all classes have content because we have some idea of what we want them to learn. Thinking which is the only tool you have for learning content. That if the content doesn't get in your thinking, you haven't learned it. So we have to think about content, and we have to think about thinking. Then we have to design some structures, that's the third concept, structure, that is designed to get the students to think through the content. So um, a fundamental part of my model for getting students to assess themselves is, first of all, to get teachers to think about what their content is and how their content is embodied in thinking. So here you have the equation content equals thinking, and I'd like to model first a teacher who doesn't accept this. The teacher might say, or professor might say this, I think that thinking is very important, and I couldn't be more supportive of critical thinking being brought into the, to the classroom. But unfortunately, I have too much content I have to cover. And therefore, I really don't have the time to put the emphasis on thinking that you're suggesting that I should. Now, to me, this represents a conceptual misunderstanding, a failure to understand, first, what content is, and secondly, to understand the relationship of content to thinking. Let me translate what was said. Though the purpose of teaching content is that the students learn it, and though thinking is the only way they can learn it, I must cover the content in a way that guarantees they won't learn it, because covering the content is more important than the students learning it. Now, I don't think anyone would ever say that, but I think that's what the first st statement meant. And that's why I say, because I don't think anyone would say the second statement, that no one really means the first statement. They just really haven't thought about it. They haven't thought through what this thing, content, is. Well, let me give you some examples. What's the content of history? Historical thinking. What's the content of algebra, algebraic thinking? What's the content of poetry, poetic thinking, literary thinking, architectural thinking, geographical thinking, parasitological thinking, biological thinking, scientific thinking, thinking like a chemist, thinking like an electronics engineer, thinking well with respect to your problems, thinking as a reader, thinking as a writer, thinking as a speaker, thinking as a listener. Any content that you can give me, I can transform into thinking. You say, what about self-esteem? Thinking in order to judge your own value and worth. The way you judge your own value of worth, the way you think it through, that's your self-esteem. Nothing other than that. What about multiculturalism? Multicultural thinking. What about problem solving? Thinking like a good problem solver. So you see, you can always take any content, basketball, thinking like a good basketball player, using your head while you play. First book I ever read on tennis was Using Your Head in Tennis. 
What about French? What about teaching French? Introduction to French. Thinking in French. Learning to think your thoughts in French. After all, that's what children have to do when they're taught a language. Nobody gives them the rules of grammar. They just start using words, and the children have to figure out what's going on here. What does it mean? So they're engaged in, if they're a, a French child in a French playroom with French parents, they have to figure out, right from the word go, what is meant. They have to begin thinking in French right away. No period of time before they have to do that thinking. And so if you're going to teach French, teach it as thinking. Teach students immediately to think. So you present problems in thinking. Imagine this is the first day of the French class. Lavez-vous. You have to figure out, what does that mean? And when you get the idea and you all stand up and I say, très bien, you know, then you know. You figured it out. Asseyez-vous, and so forth. So in, in the appropriate teaching of language, you immediately present problems where the students have to begin to think in that language. Because when you begin to think within the content, you learn it. And until you begin to think within the content, you're in no position to learn it. You didn't memorize a lot of data about your mother and then figure her out. You figured her out as, you, as data was coming in. And you kept making theories and formulating hypotheses about what you could get away with. And you tested those hypotheses in action. So you begin as a total thinker in a world which presents you with multitudes of problems and you have to figure them out. That's how you learn. So learning is problem solving, learning is thinking, learning is engagement in an agenda in which you're trying to figure things out and arrange them in your head or in embody them in your action. So this overall concept is essential, I think, on the global level to move into a set of strategies in which you want students to assess their own thinking. If this makes sense to you, then you will begin to think about the thinking you want. And when you begin to think about the thinking you want, then you may or may not realize that there's only three things that you need to do to teach well. One is you need to model the thinking you want. So the French instructor that says, Lavez-vous, asseyez-vous, and then ask the question in French, to which you have to answer, is modeling right away French thinking. Putting it right in front of you and inviting you to jump in and try out. Try to get that thinking going in you. So good teachers model the thinking they want. If they're teaching history, they think historically in front of their students slowly and carefully helping the students to see what, it, what do you do with your mind when you're thinking historically. And if they're, math, math, if they're teaching math, then they think aloud in front of the students slowly through a math problem, making explicit the questions that enter their mind as they think this problem through, and encouraging the students to do likewise. So you model the thinking you want. You design structures to engage the students in thinking, active, collaborative learning, or individual production. And then here's the third part that is the thing we're going to focus on today. You hold them responsible for the thinking they do by teaching them how to assess the thinking that they do, or using structures that actually require them to sort of see what it is to assess their thinking. So for example, here's, uh, let me give you a couple of sort of micro strategies before I go further on the macro level. I will tell my students that at any point in time in class, there will be a question on the floor. Because we'll always be thinking and you can't think without a question. Now one of two things will be true of you as the student. You will either know what the question on the floor is or you won't. If you don't know what the question is on the floor, this is your posture. And this is what comes out of your mouth. What's the question on the floor? If your hand is down, your posture is telling me, I know the question on the floor. Therefore, I can call upon you whenever your hand is down and ask you what the question is on the floor. Now, by adopting this particular strategy and following up on it, I have the students monitoring the question on the floor. 
they keep thinking about the question on the floor because I hold them responsible for that thinking. So, for example, what is the question on the floor right now? Who can tell us the question on the floor right now? Yes? What teachers can do to foster critical thinking in the class is a broad question on the floor. Let's narrow it a bit. And hold students responsible for the thinking they do. Now, if you begin to use this particular structure of asking students to articulate the question on the floor, you'll find there'll be a narrow question on the floor, a broader question behind that, and a broader question behind that. So they begin to think in terms of questions radiating outward and inward. And in any case, they become skilled in identifying questions on the floor which is a very important critical thinking skill, important reading skill, important listening skill. After all, you're arguing with somebody, what is the question? What are we disagreeing about? You're reading a passage. What's the main question in this passage that the passage is responsive to? What is the main question in the first chapter in the textbook? What is the main question in the first section of the first chapter in the textbook? What is the main question in the textbook as a whole? What is the main question we ask within this subject? What is a fundamental question in biology? Do you see what I mean? So you have strategies in which, of course, you model this, and then you require it of the students, and you hold them responsible. You either check, you know, do something that forces them to check themselves, or you do something that forces them to check each other. 